Why won't you work? <laughs> Yo, welcome back to the channel. Oh, that was cringe. That was cringe. I've not even saying the rest of it. <laughs> Hypervolt today, Hypervolt, Hypervolt 3.0, would you believe it? And now comes with a bit of the old rear entry. Take it from the back. Um, take it from behind. Don't think anyone's ever done a, a, um, a car charger on YouTube before, so it's nice to be the first one on there. Let's go in there. It's going to run through the garage. Clip, 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 clip. Clippity, clip, clip, clip. Fuse boards on the other side of that. It's a fuse box RCBO board. We've just got a mini RCBO for that, so that we've so that it's double pole. So yeah, and we're using six mil EV. No, it's not EV Ultra cable. Cut that bit out, Sean. We're not allowed to say that. This is Hypervolt's own cable, which is called HyperConnect, and it's a 6mm free court with a data cable inside that we'll be using for the CT clamps. Hopefully, we can get a drill through there on an angle, but I'm not sure it is quite the distance that in it for a little single brick. So, we may have to nip into the porch through there first and then back in because it's on the left hand side. Charger obviously needs to be in the middle so it looks normal. So from there to there through. What is. I oh, don't know, maybe we can. We'll try it. It's the worst that happens, we end up in the porch anyway. So yeah, we're just going to run this out. We're clipping it up and across and back down, I think. Well, it looks like the only way without moving all this stuff, doesn't it? So yeah, let's crack on with that. To get a drill bit big enough for the linear clips, Ryan. What size is it? Oh, another bonus with the Hypervolt, the new 3.0. It does come with a little manual that tells tells you how to set the current limits and all sorts of stuff, which it didn't used to. So there's the uh, load management toggly switch and then the, the hard current limit, which will be on 32. Um, this property has been requested by the local DNO to stay on 60 amps maximum so that's what we'll do until they come and upgrade the fuse which they are doing it also tell you what will tell you what all the uh, colors of the lights mean so obviously red is fault which is nice to give to the customer at the end 10 mil linear clips 10 mil old bish bash bosh let's start doing some stuff tell them to subscribe Brian. i'm sick of this subscribe Ryan's just on the suicide step noisy Drilling all these holes. Luckily, Hyperwallet have not changed the little drilling template, so that's the centre line there. The height's about 13, 50. So you know, centre, drop it down a little bit so we get it in fixings in the brick and not the mortar lines, which is about there. Because I don't want any mortar lines. Obviously, we can put a level on that bottom piece, level it up, mark our holes, and mark the charger. Get ready to drill through. Nice little bit of kit that. I mean, you can always just make it another charger box. It's easy to get a level on this. It's that way around, not the other way. Right, that's that mounted. Decided to go for the middle. Perfectly level. It just doesn't quite look it because of them bricks. But once the cover's on and it's wrapped around, you'd notice if I followed the bricks. Decided not to use the rear entry hole on this one. Just because you can never see the cable anyway, I get that little bit of an extra and I can start my hole there and get a better angle towards the garage than I can from there. Um, and not only that is, it keeps the whole unit completely sealed from water ingress, uh, so, because you can't see it anyway once the cover's on because it overhangs by about this much. So we get a nice tight bend in there. And uh, yeah, it keeps the unit completely sealed, so I think that's much better. Anyway, but the, the rear entry does have its perks, especially if you're using twin and earth sometimes. So that's that getting clipped in. I just need to drill here now so then Ryan can see where he needs to whoosh, clip down to. Clip down over at the other end and find a route to the fuse marks. 
So I've just uh, stuck a pilot hole through, obviously the cable doesn't fit through that little hole, but that's my pilot hole right below the stuffing land. We can whip in uh, on that fancy, fancy angle. Oh, look at me drilling an angle. Let's make a t-shirt, Ryan, about stuff we do every day anyway. Let's make a big deal out of it, but yeah, got that through there. Now we can just go and go up there like that, just so that, I don't know. That's Ryan's. You're gonna have to grab all the charger and go, why won't you work? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, Ryan's can do that. I'm not, uh, Ryan's, Ryan's decide. Let him do it. I just need to make this all much thicker. Right, that's that in. Little swoop. Uh, the brick sort of broke off on that angle, so it made sense to keep it on that angle because it sits flat against the wall. And obviously, it's quite a big cable. The bend isn't perfectly tight. <laughs> And then we're uh, ready now. Just leave this disconnected so I can do my R1, R2 test and whatnot. And then we're ready to leave a bit of length on them. Curl them round as such and get them in. And that's there. Just fill that all in with a bit of silicon. Nice and swooped in and hopefully you won't see it once it's up and running. Ryan's just finishing off that one now. We've just drilled that through. So that's going through the wall there. We're just going to clip that down and then I can make it off. Get the tester out. Do a bit of testing. Jobs are good, and then uh, we've got the data connected to where the CT goes. They've now marked these black and white, which is good because before they didn't have, and they didn't have the the guide either. You had to go online to find out which one was black and white because it, it it is polarity sensitive. Just doing the R1 R2 test. We've done that. Now we're doing the R1 RN. It's not on the test sheet, but you do it anyway, just to make sure. And it's exactly the same as the R1, R2. Of course, because they're all three conductors of 6 mil in this instance. Next one, insulation resistance, which I'll go and do with the cube tumor unit side. So I'm not filming that, because I'm only filming outside today. But you know how to do it. You know how to do it. And if you don't know how to do it, comment below. I answer every single comment. Right, that's that dead tested complete. I'm just setting these limits now. So all four of them dip switches set to the right as you're looking at it. That sets this to pull a maximum of 32 amps. But the tiny little dial above it is set to 60 amps because that's the size of the main fuse in this house. Um, so if the house is using 50 amps, for example, this won't pull 32 amps, it'll pull nine, 10. And as soon as it's available, it'll start using 32 amps and whatnot, but it'll never go over 60 amps until he gets his main fuse upgraded to 100, then he can set that to 80, 100, whatever. Um, so that's that in there. It's very small, but there you go. Right, so that's up and running. Now we're just doing the RCD test. We're set to EV, we're set to auto. We set the adapter to charging, so now the hypervolt thinks that's the car and it's plugged in and it's charging, which is why this goes green. We've got voltage, we press test and it'll trip the RCD in the house for the first few and the last two will do the internal RCD, which will also trip as well. Which as you've just seen, it's tripped there, it's tripped in the house. Now, someone mentioned to me the other day they struggled doing the RCD test on this charger and the reason was is it never come back on that is because as you can see that it's just started charging again to do the next test within the hypervolt app itself there's a little tick box that is called random start now when it restarts it won't start charging again for 20 minutes maybe 15 it's random uh, and in that time your tester would have gone off so you need to go in the app first turn the random start off so that it will actually keep coming back on as you turn the RCD back on. Ryan's just doing the RCD for me there. Which is all good, all good. I've not counted any yet. So, right, I think we've done four and now we've gone over to the EV as you can see there. At the bottom there, the DC trip, sorry. And just like that, Sean, I done all the work. And that is the end of that beautiful hypervolt charger. 10 meter lead. It wraps up quite tight actually. You can't really see the bottom end uh, bottom entry thing like I was saying anyway. Uh, 
but yeah, I was expecting it to wrap up and be stuck right out here. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Peace. See you on the next one. Oh wait, before before I finish the video, can you believe that this does all fancy light shows and changes colour and the customer just comes straight out and said, in fact, I'll turn it off completely. <laughs> oh no, I'd have it all lit up as bright as I possibly could. But 